If you were at the rally last night, um, Peter Tapper was the last speaker at the, uh, the rally, uh, referred to a BBC TV programme uh, on Thursday night called The Year the Town Hall Shrank, and it was all about Stoke Council from December of 2010, uh, almost two years uh, ago, and uh, cameras following the decision making process uh, of that uh, uh, Labour led, not, not a Labour authority, coalition uh, um, authority making cuts of £36 million pounds out of a budget of just over 200 And in the end, I regretfully saw the first 45 minutes of it, so um, I can't say with uh, uh, complete accuracy whether anything changed in the last 15 uh, minutes. But despite making a decision to close care homes, uh, swimming pools, um, uh, libraries, um, there was no dissenting voice from any elected politician in that uh, film uh, about uh, resisting the cuts merely in the political impact of whether or not they carried out specific cuts. For example, there was quite a big campaign <coughs> of parents against uh, nursery closures, so they debated whether or not it was politically expedient to uh, carry out those cuts, but not the resistance uh, of the cuts uh, generally. I suspect across uh, the country as a whole, over the last two, two and a half years, there have been hundreds of Labour groups meeting and having similar uh, uh, debates. Uh, regretfully, uh, there are hundreds of thousands of uh, jobs which are gone or are going in those authorities. The services relied uh, upon by millions of people are being affected and billions of pounds which otherwise would have been spent in local uh, economies um, have been lost by job losses, by purchasing uh, uh, cutbacks and by pay freezes of those who remain um, in work. And there's a deafening silence. Uh, no real industrial or political strategy coming from uh, those elected uh, uh, councils. And this, when only 15 to 20 percent uh, of the cuts have so far, uh, this is the only time we get to visual uh, uh, aids, whether you use the uh, recent uh, graphs from Newsnight or the Institute of Fiscal uh, Studies, the same message is there, that the actual uh, implementation so far of the, the cuts um, is, uh, in general terms, less than 20 percent uh, of what is yet uh, to come. Rather than starting with the famous George Osborne's We're All In Together, um, and the only general points I want to make before the specifics of what the meeting is about, but clearly that isn't the case. Um, over the period of the last 15 years, chief executives of the top 100 companies in this country have seen their pay go from an average 45 times the average wage of those com uh, companies to now 120 times the average wage of those companies. Over the exact same period, the average wages of 18 to 21 year olds, uh, according to last week's uh, Economist, has fallen in real terms by 10%. Not tripled like the leaders of those companies, but fallen in real uh, terms. Perhaps a more opposite uh, contrast, given the topic of the, the, the meeting, is Coventry, my uh, local authority, charged with making £140 million worth of cuts during the life of this uh, uh, parliament has so far uh, got rid of about 700 uh, jobs, closed uh, uh, nurseries and other uh, uh, services. Less than two miles away from where we're meeting here today, on the corner of Hyde Park, is a newish block of flats, a six-bedroomed penthouse suite of which, at one Hyde Park, sold just under a year ago for £140 million. Pounds. And what sort of society is it that says that the services and jobs of hundreds of people in the Coventry that provide uh, essential services for thousands of local uh, uh, people have to be cut, whilst that society also says it's okay for one family to buy a second, third or fourth home in uh, London, costing exactly the same as a city of a third of a million people is losing in cuts. So what should councillors do when faced with uh, these horrendous uh, job losses and service cuts? It's not an abstract question. Clearly on Tory or Liberal Democrat led authorities, you'd expect every Labour or other opposition party uh, uh, representative to oppose the, uh, the cuts. But what should they do uh, in the way in which the meeting uh, today has been uh, uh, introduced uh, where Labour itself is in control? Now, we're not the first generation to have faced uh, this uh, problem. Uh, most of the services we rely on, whether it's uh, public housing or all the way through the comprehensive education, have been fought and won by campaigns and action of ordinary working uh, people, not least uh, 80 to 100 years ago in the Red Strikes um, in Scotland and uh, uh, many cities around the, the country, which led directly to the provision by councils of public uh, uh, housing. And those past generations had to face the question 
that there may be a national government in uh, Westminster saying one thing, but the needs of a local community are different. And if it's a question of breaking the law in order to uh, achieve those uh, needs and force politicians to change the law to guarantee those services, then that was something worth doing. Three brief examples for that. Firstly, at the end of the First World War, uh, in fact, uh, since Naomi mentions where she uh, uh, comes from, it was Poplar, now Tower Hamlets uh, in London, only a few miles away from where we are uh, today. The Labour councillors on that uh, local authority, remember this was a Labour Party that at that stage had been established for less than uh, 20 years, um, brought in equal pay and minimum wage for effectively council workers and were faced with the choice of having to abandon that strategy or raise local rates in order to pay for it, um, not dissimilar to some of today's debates in local authorities. Now the detail about the precepts and uh, the, the, the poorer and richer and poorer across London you ought to read up on, and there's a book by Noreen Branson uh, on populism which is well worth um, a, a, a read, but those Labour councillors decided to refuse to do either, not to cut the wages, nor to put the, the burden on local people by raising the rates. 30 of them were in prison, they ran their council from their prison uh, uh, cells, mass action and demonstrations were organised in the, uh, the area, and as often happens in these cases, what was achieved on the streets outside of Parliament was later codified in Parliament itself, when a, a bill was rushed through Parliament to equalise the contribution of London boroughs uh, towards uh, uh, the services, and those councillors were released, and their leader, George Lansbury, went on to become the leader of the Labour Party. A bit more up to date, in the early 70s, um, Edward Heath, Tory Prime Minister, Housing Finance Act of 1972, Little Village in Derbyshire, Clay Cross, they brought in better uh, conditions and wages for council uh, uh, workers, and they were told that they had to raise the rents on people to pay for those. Uh, so they refused to do either the cutting of the wages or the raising of the, uh, the, the rents. The Tory government of the day surcharged and banned them from uh, office. And if anybody's seen the famous uh, film Spartacus, if you haven't, the book's on sale in the bookshop uh, uh, two floors uh, below us, by, uh, by the way. When those uh, uh, councillors were, were uh, banned from the office, the villages of that area of Derbyshire responded in a Spartacus moment and there were queues of people saying, we'll stand as councillors in order to carry on the same project. Now, because the local authority reorganisation, the board report in 1974, that particular council was uh, subsumed within Derbyshire uh, County Council, but the point still remains, people were prepared to stand in the uh, county, but local people supported them. And then, finally, and Harry will give you far much more detail, on this so-called rape rebellions of the 1980s. 20 Labour councillors started resisting the Thatcher. At the end of this process, by 1987, only two Lambeth and Liverpool were, uh, were left. But in the case of Liverpool, the very act of resistance and fighting won concessions which are still there in the bricks and mortar of the sports centres, the parks, and the thousands of houses that were created. So job cuts, wage freezes, deteriorating uh, services, faced by previous generations, of Labour uh, and trade union activists, but unlike today's elected politicians, in Birmingham where a week ago they're talking about decommissioning whole weight swathes of the services and either no longer running them or putting them out to the private sector, or in Coventry where through voluntary retirement and uh, uh, redu voluntary redundancy and early retirement hundreds of jobs have gone, or Barnsley where workers have been sacked and rehired on new worse conditions, Today's uh, Labour leaders, what we saw in Poplar, Claycross and Liverpool was genuine resistance to those uh, cuts. Now there's no guarantee if you fight that you win, but if you don't fight you get rolled over. And past generations decided it was worth uh, 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 fighting. Today's councillors aren't themselves powerless. There are many ways in which, even with restrictions placed upon them, they could find points of, uh, of resistance and of support. For example, Labour councillors could have uh, decided that when EMA has disappeared because of, of a, uh, a national decision of, of the government, they would take, uh, probably in most cases, locally a few hundred thousand pounds from reserves to pay uh, EMA for an extra a, a year, in return of saying to all those young people, we now need a mass campaign in our town and our city to demand from the government they continue the, the funding. The same point could be made um, with go, uh, even with the change legislation, trying to force uh, uh, academies uh, in, or in the next uh, few months when local authorities take over new uh, functions, whether it's uh, taking over the social fund from the DWP, taking over on a local based uh, uh, council tax rebate instead of council tax benefit which is nationally uh, uh, set, or the changes 
to uh, uh, tenancy uh, agreements. There are loads of different ways in which local labour authorities could resist those uh, things and build campaigns which had uh, uh, the, 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 the welcome effect of unity between the staff providing a service, the, uh, the users of that service in the, uh, the communities, and why the uh, people want to resist the, uh, the, uh, the cuts. And if only one council took a stand on some of that, you can imagine the electrification of politics that would uh, take place uh, from that. If Labour was to say, any council that uh, uh, borrow from reserves to protect services would be repaid those borrowings by an incoming Labour government in 2015, if Miliband made a promise uh, uh, like that, then you get the confidence amongst loads of, uh, of authorities to resist these cuts that the Tories are trying to uh, make, and make those uh, cuts um, unworkable. So our central message is this. There are precedents. Take the Liverpool Road. Assess a town or a, needs, uh, a city's needs. Budget accordingly. Refuse to carry out uh, uh, cuts. Don't attack the communities that you're there to represent. Now, what will be the consequences? And now I'm speeding up because of time um, is, is against me. There are myths still put forward every time you raise this issue of, of resistance. So let's deal with them in sentences. Councillors today can't be imprisoned, like the pop councillors. Councillors today can't be surcharged, like in Liverpool or Lambeth. That was actually abolished 12 years ago in, the, in 2000. What can happen is that if you don't have due regard to the advice of the Director of Finance, you can be reported to the Standards uh, uh, Board, and you can be disqualified from standing as a, as a councillor. So what? Then we'd evoke Clay Cross and the Spartans of movement from going to the communities who are under threat and say, you now provide an extra person. If that person gets disqualified, provide an extra uh, person. The other thing is that the commissioners could be sent. Now that's only happened once in Doncaster on the question of social services. But how would commissioners run a city if tens, hundreds or thousands of council workers refuse to cooperate with the appointees of the Tory government. So we are not powerless in this uh, situation. Will councillors uh, do it? Well, it doesn't look uh, uh, promising at the, uh, the moment. I haven't got time to deal, I hope there's somebody here from Brighton who can uh, deal with the Greens. I haven't got time to deal with the question of whether uh, any other opposition uh, councillors would resist uh, cuts. Uh, as I say, it's not hopeful. But of the thousands of Labour councillors, you can name them on, the, on one hand what's happened. There was a resignation in, uh, in Barking, there was a suspension in, uh, in Lambeth, but that uh, uh, Conway has now gone back into the Labour group. There was a resignation in, uh, in York, there was actually a Tory deputy leader down in Devon who, uh, who resigned uh, his position over the cuts. And then there's the best example of Don and, uh, and Keith from uh, Southampton, um, who have formed a group of Labour councillors against the, uh, the, the cuts and made a marvellous and substantial donation last night in the, in the collection for the Socialist uh, uh, Party, if you were there, present in that, uh, that uh, uh, rally. What do we, we, this is the way I'll, I'll, I'll fit in. what do we do then if uh, that is not uh, forthcoming, if there are not uh, uh, Labour councillors who are uh, <coughs> stepping up to the, uh, the, the bridge. Clearly we need a, a twin strategy. I haven't got time to deal with the industrial uh, side of uh, uh, the, the need for the, the TUC to uh, unite the inevitable struggles that are going to come from uh, everybody from teachers to, to PCS members who are going into struggle less two or three year month. If they set the same date for their uh, struggle and then the TUC took that motion from the Brighton uh, conference and appealed for uh, national uh, support, industrial action in support of those uh, uh, struggles, you would have the beginnings of a national general, one day general uh, strike, which is so uh, uh, essential. But if that does not uh, happen, we also need a political alternative to the cuts, particularly coming up uh, in, uh, in, in May, when there are elections taking place in 35 uh, local authorities in uh, England and in Anglesey in uh, uh, Wales, and a number of uh, mayoral uh, uh, elections in Doncaster and other uh, places. Two and a half thousand uh, seats. Now, the Trainers for Socialist Coalition, of which I'm the chair, has stood uh, in council elections uh, about 140 this year, 170 um, last year, gained an average of 5.2% in 2011, 6.2% in 2012. In those seats where we stood the same seat in both elections, 2011 and 2012, an average of 7%, getting uh, uh, individuals elected in Walsall and in, uh, in, in Preston. But at that very early stage, uh, because of a lack of visibility, particularly when it comes to coverage of uh, elections taking place. So we've taken the decision for the next elections in May 2013 
to try and stand at least 400 candidates around the, uh, the country, because that's the 15% of the 2,500 seats up for election, which the BBC, over which the BBC will then guarantee some form of, uh, of, of, of coverage. I haven't got the time to, I'm presuming most people here are familiar with, uh, with Tusk. If you're not, then give me your email at the end of uh, today. I, I spoke at an IMT political uh, training school about 10 days ago and, provide, and, and produced for them a pack which has got the history of Tusk, the policies for the council elections, application forms to become a council candidate, fundraising uh, material, articles from uh, Alex Gordon, the president of the IMT, etc. And if anybody would like that sending uh, uh, to them to use uh, locally, give me an email at the end of the uh, uh, session and I'll, uh, I'll do that uh, uh, for you. We will be unable, however, um, to complete the necessary uh, uh, work of providing a political alternative that at the very least would force the debate to the left uh, within uh, uh, council and other uh, elections because at the moment uh, if you turn on Newsnight or any other uh, 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 programme and uh, everyone, including regretfully the, 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 the journalists who are doing the interview in the world, start from the premise Cuts have to be uh, made, of course, don't they? And then there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a small debate on the margins about the speed, not about the direction of austerity uh, itself. And if we're to drag that debate to the left and force um, the, uh, the question of austerity to be tested, we need to get the, alter the independent political alternative much more visible than it is at the, uh, the moment. So I've also brought standing order uh, forms for anybody who thinks that this project is worth uh, supporting. Perhaps a pound a month or two pound a month if you could uh, afford it would enable us to produce far more material than we're currently able to, uh, to do. We are standing now in more by-elections including Manchester uh, Central in uh, uh, November 15th, the mayor elections in Bristol on the same uh, uh, day. There will be parliamentary elections, uh, possibly in the, in the early part of December, in, uh, in Rotherham, in, uh, uh, in Croydon uh, and in Middlesbrough, although well, those dates haven't been uh, 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 called uh, uh, yet. And to finish, uh, uh, comrades, um, the Socialist Party, within uh, our work within the Trade Unions and Socialist uh, Coalition, believe that there needs to be uh, much more uh, stiffened resistance against the cuts that are taking place in local authority uh, uh, services. And frankly, we should be saying to uh, 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 Labour councillors in areas where we are, either you sign some form of, of pledge, such as the eight points on the Tusk 2013 local council election uh, uh, policy, which is <coughs> we will refuse to pay the uh, cuts, refuse to pass the costs on to local communities, etc., etc. You can read the detail of it. Or stand aside because Tusk will uh, uh, seek to look to trade union organisations and working class uh, uh, activists to put up uh, alternative uh, uh, candidates. Anything less than that will result in a division taking place between those who rely on services provided by local authorities and those who work providing those services as jobs or services becomes the only option that uh, uh, labour controlled authorities are put in front of, uh, of, of people. We believe in that spirit of popular whose slogan, by the way, was, it's better to break the law than to break the, uh, the poor. We believe in building a mass campaign to take the Liverpool Road, which Harry is now about to give uh, detailed examples uh, to you. But if we're to get to, uh, along that uh, path, then we need uh, far more uh, resources bringing to this campaign. This is the most serious left political alternative being built in Britain today. It has the official support of the RMT at its conference in Torquay in June. You heard at the rally last night, it has from the Assistant General Secretary of the POA, and I, and I, and I, and I believe from the General Secretary Steve Gillen as well, an intention to take to the POA conference next year to get official support for this campaign. It has individuals from unions which are not affiliated to Labour, like the Fire Brigades Union, the PCS, the NUT, involved in its National uh, uh, Steering Committee. It's committed to challenging the overlapping agenda of the establishment parties on austerity by building a new political alternative that's rooted in the organisations and communities of the working class of this uh, uh, country. Nothing less than that can uh, do the job of resisting the, uh, uh, the cuts and plans of austerity. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks a lot. I'm Harry Smith. Uh, I'm one of the 47 surcharge councillors. And uh, if you look at, we, I went to see the archives uh, of the city council uh, in the library department <coughs> because we're doing a um, an exhibition uh, for the 47 because it's 30 years um, ne next year. And 
even Liverpool City Council Library Department have, have classified the, the from 83 to 87 as the militant years. No, it's not the Liverpool City Council in that period. Even the City Council call it the militant years. And when we were look, you're looking through the uh, the archives, uh, I was I was in a lot of the articles, but you actually see how how horrible the, the free press was, telling people uh, you know what we're up to, you know the building houses, the breaking the law, they're doing this, they're doing that, you know, and we uh, we we set up ourselves our own paper uh, called Not the Echo, but. <laughs> The, the thing which I think people have got to realise here, the, the 47 didn't just appear uh, by magic, and it wasn't just a group of people who, who just happened to be on the council and decided to have a go. Over many years, 20, 30 years before, militant supporters and good lefts on the, uh, in the Labour Party took over the district Labour Party, and everybody used to get interviewed, and you were asked uh, a number of questions, you know, but basic things like, uh, what's the policy making body of, for the Labour group? And if you said, well, the Labour group, you didn't get on the, on the panel, so you didn't get elected. But if you said the District Labour Party, you went, you, you know, you, you, you'd go on it, because the, 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 the rules were that the DLP did make the policy for the council, but the council decided at what period, uh, what time they would take to implement it. So they could accept the, the, the policy and take 100 years to, you know, you know, to implement it. But what we had on the, uh, in the, the Labour group, we ended up with 49, sadly, before we were surcharged, two, two, two died, so it was 47 uh, that was actually surcharged. And we see like an organisation uh, like that we're in today, how you can you know, have influence and power. Out of that Labour group, there was only 11 militant supporters and... I'm happy to say that I was one of them. So there was 11 out of 47 that basically went along uh, to, to the Labour group and showed many of them up, but a lot of them didn't need it, to be fair. They were, you know, they were willing to have a go. Because in the past years, they had tried things. Like the Labour group in 1979 actually put up a 50% um, 50 rate rise. And we, we as, a, as a, a group, the militants, were saying, this is mad putting the, the, the rates up. And what happened was, in 1980, I got elected in 1980, because we were in what would be considered the safe Labour seats, the, the electorate basically turned round and said, you know, you're not on. And Labour suffered badly and didn't take control in 1980. Now, with the county council elections and what have you, it was something like, it was only in 1983 that we actually took control. Well, a lot of people didn't realise what the implication of that was, but being a, a militant supporter and go into branch meetings every week and discuss and I knew exactly what that meant and I'll, I'll admit that uh, when we were in the Walton Labour Club and the votes were coming in and we realised we took overall control I went oh like everyone's running around cheering and I knew it was, it, if we could carry the Labour group it probably would meant eight yards you know so but I, I, and I went oh bloody hell here we go because I knew what the implications was and luckily for, 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 for everyone if you like it, we, we did manage to carry the day. And I think what you've got, you've got to realise what we were up against at that time. It wasn't just Thatcher we were up against, it was the Labour Party. And what's been said was, we were actually the only Labour group in the country that was carrying out uh, Labour Party policy. The conference had passed what we were doing and everyone else, uh, you know, were, were, were basically going along with the cuts and, and carrying the cuts out. Now, a lot of the prominent members of the, the original group of, of, of councillors that were fighting the cuts, uh, they bottled out, but by magic, they all ended up in the Houses of the Parliament, so you've got to work out uh, you know, what, 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 what that basically was in the end. But, but just in, in Liverpool, we were doing things like building more council houses than the rest of the country put together. Now, the facility was there, other councillors could have done it if they wanted to. But you'd see the Liverpool Echo and, and, and you know, Comrie Kinnick saying things like, uh, they're borrowing money off foreign banks. Everybody borrows money off foreign banks. And believe me, the bankers were queuing up outside the municipal buildings wanting to lend money to, local, you know, to, to, to a local authority at that time. And we ended up, we ended up, like, in the end, the district orders had come in, 
and people, uh, uh, mostly Labour Party members, uh, were saying to the district auditor, have a look at this, have a look at that, have a look at that. And he did a report saying that the money that Liverpool City Council borrowed was probably the best deal of any local authority you know, in the country. And we, 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 we had a, a, a team of knowledgeable people who were doing things. And one thing we did, we had council um, mortgages. When people had bought council houses, they got the mortgages off us. Well, that money's just laying in the trough doing nothing. And we worked out that you could sell the mortgages. And we sold them to the Bank of France, like this is the Bank of England. We kept complete control of them, but we just got the money that we could put into, into, into a capital thing. And we realised it would be a bit, a bit awkward. We waited till 5 o'clock Friday night to do it. Uh, and, and it went through. We got the money to build more houses. By Monday morning, that was illegal. <laughs> the Tory government over the weekend had made that illegal. And on Monday morning, we were getting phone calls of just about every council in the country, Tory, Liberal, Labour council, saying, how did you do that? You know, give us the details. But by the time... Uh, we got the phone calls, it was actually illegal. So that's one thing. If someone, if an MP tells you that if you're asking for wheelchair access or you're asking for a, a, the law to be changed, and they'll tell you it takes years to bring laws in, it takes a weekend when there's no one in Parliament. If they want it to be law, it will, you know, it will be law. Uh, we, we, a number of us uh, in this period... Uh, we're getting expelled. As it happened, I was one of 13 who went down, and I was the one that never got expelled. But uh, I, I left. <laughs> I, just, I just voluntarily left at the end. It, just, it, was just, uh, it was just that bad. But you see the way uh, you, you have the Labour Party, you've got like a bureaucratic thing. What happened was we, we, we were going to the local government um, uh, conference in Nottingham, and I went from the DLP, I went from the floor of the DLP. But on my stuff, they sent me in a councillor, Harry Smith. So when I went to, uh, to put me thing in, they went, oh, there's a problem with this. Uh, it's, it's, it's irregular. You should be with the councillors. I went, no, I'm from the DLP. No, no, no. So someone comes to explain to me, I am a councillor, but I'm from the floor of the... Well, that's never been known before. I said, well, <laughs> I said, well that's, it. that's your problem, isn't it? Not mine. And in the end, they let me in. But they couldn't work out how a councillor would come from the floor of the DLP. They just thought it was a... They were just, you know, just, just completely uh, two separate organisations. But in, in Liverpool at the time, the, the, the Labour group was no different than the rest of the, of the DLP. And there was no... Uh, the, you know, the, 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 there was absolutely no, no difference. And we're talking about the time, the DLP and some of the meetings, if there was things to be decided. We were getting 400, 400 delegates and visitors uh, to, our, uh, to, to our, our, our meetings. Now, I was speaking around the country, and I was going to some DLPs, and I was amazed that there were six or seven people attending their DLPs. And in the end, one of the things we were charged with was, uh, there was too much influence in, with the DLP. We were taking too, you know, taking too, too, too much notice of the, uh, you know, of, of the DLP. But even now, we see uh, the trade union movements, the, the leaders, like supporting cut councils that that are, that are making cuts. We see my, you know, Len McCluskey, my old general secretary. We went to a meeting. A few of us went to a meeting for uh, get back in the Labour Party. And Lenny uh, wouldn't let us talk. He says, oh, I know what you're up to, I know what you're here for. <laughs> Very comradely and friendly, you know. But it's like reclaim the Labour Party. Now, the difference between now and, uh, and, and when I was on, on the council is, you actually had a Labour Party that had a facility to, to pass resolutions and go forward and put pressure. What they've actually done with the Labour Party now, they've taken all that away. So the councillors that are on the councils now, feel no pressure uh, from, under, you know, fr from underneath, from the, the wars, the constituencies, if they exist. And that's one of the reasons that you need, we need to have organisations like Tusk that we can, we can uh, you know, get. And even if we just stand candidates against them, it will, you know, it will, it will make, make, make them think. And the, 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 I've got a, a, a record here of what, what we actually did. And if you look at it, it seems like it was from an, a, another planet, which, you know, it, to, even to me now it does. But we, we did things like 5,000 council houses, 
and we actually improved seven and a half thousand. We topped down masonettes and uh, you know and, and, and improved six nursery classes. We we reorganised the secondary schools, which were an absolute shambles. It was almost like we had good schools and we had almost secondary modern schools that were, were, were called. You know, we we reorganised that three parks. We were the first authorities in Victorian times to open open parks, and this Labour council now are actually talking about uh, selling some of them off, you know, to build on them. And, and when I I turn up at meetings, it makes people very uncomfortable. <laughs> and the the, the the Lord Mayor, like for some reason, he just won't even look at me. It's almost as if he's scared, you know, he's scared of me. And when I confront some of them, they say things like. Well, I'll get thrown off the council. I said, well, if you vote for the cup, what's the point of being there? You might as well get thrown off unless someone else on. But there's also a difference. Now, some of them are making quite a few bob out of being, uh, being on the council. And there's a, there's a woman who's literally uh, just joined, uh, joined the, the, the Socialist Party. Uh, and she does a bit of research. And she keeps putting on Facebook and that what some of these people are getting. And I, I don't want to be unkind, but some of them are... are basically thick, you know, and they're picking up 60 grand a year, you know, where it's, uh, you know, it's like, and what they're doing is they're looking after their allowances rather than the, the, the people uh, in the areas where they are. Now, you know, that's one thing about, where, where, when, I, when I was on the council, the allowances weren't very good, but what we did, we used to get um, chairman's allowances, which were a few thousand pounds, depending on what, what you were on. Well, that was, every penny of that was donated back to the Labour Party, and that's what we used to print the not the echo, uh, not not the echo, not the echo paper. We, uh, we, we just one thing that Dave said about the Greens. What are the Greens like? There's only two Greens in Liverpool, and at a rally when people were, were, were like saying, "Oh, the cuts are terrible, aren't they?" The two Green, the two Green candidates, they're, they're so thick, if you like. Well, there's no alternative. You've got to accept the cuts. Well, you can imagine the meeting just exploded. You know, and you'd think anyone would just sit there and say nothing rather than say that. But when we look at Brighton and we see what the Greens are up to, they're, they're just another, you know, they pretend to be just another capitalist party. Um, you know, and that's it. So I think, uh, I think that's probably uh, enough, really. So, yeah. so if I've missed anything out, someone can make that question.